Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. If you've not already, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, ring that little bell, get notifications of my videos as and when I release them. And today is not a typical video for me. Um, <clears throat> yeah, there's no like good way to go about this, I suppose, but today is the 3rd of March, 2023. For those of you who have subscribed to the channel and been watching the videos, you've been watching videos from probably 2020, um, which is like when I started my trailer project, just doing it as and when I can around other jobs, um, when time allows really. So um, <clears throat> yeah, you'll notice from some of the videos that the weather between videos differs a lot. Sometimes I'll be in shorts because it's summer and other times I'll be in a woolly hat because it's winter. Um, so there's not really a great deal of consistency there. But the videos I have done and that are getting uploaded are getting uploaded in the order I've been doing the work on the trailer. So it might not necessarily be the best order. But because the stuff on the trailer at this time, <clears throat> it's kind of like the easiest way to work and do it if that makes sense to you um so the reason for this video today is uh yeah on my birthday i had a little bit of an accident and i broke my ankle ouch excuse the mess on the desk but it's a bit hard at the moment so yeah i um i'm now two weeks hopefully into <clears throat> my ankle being better. Um, I've had the initial visit to A and E when I broke it. And I've had two follow up appointments at the fracture clinic. Going again next week to find out whether the <clears throat> ankle needs operating on. Fingers crossed it doesn't. Um, the only reason I'm saying that is because if it does, it means the whole eight week repair process for the bone starts again. So I'm already two weeks into that process at the moment, hopefully. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm going to be going there again this week now and going to be finding out basically whether I'm good to stay in a cast and have me ankle put into a more neutral position or whether like I say they're gonna have to operate it to move the bones or pin it or whatever they've got to do. Either way it has been <clears throat> challenging. Um, it's not just you lose the use of your leg and your foot, you lose the use of your arms and your hands as well when you're on the crutches moving about which is something that you don't really think of. You think you'd be able to carry stuff still. But the reality of the fact is you can carry something in a bag on the crutch as long as it's light because every time you move, then it's got like a pendulum effect as you move forwards. The biggest struggle I found is just physically moving food and drink from the kitchen into the living area basically you have to plan out literally every three to four foot where you're going to put stuff so that you can prep your food or your drink move it along the counter move it along the, take a step move it along the counter again take a step move it along the counter again take another step move it across the room because the worktop counter is against the Back external wall <clears throat> so I then have to move across the room to the tumble dryer which is against the internal wall and then from the tumble dryer move it through the living room door onto the living room radiator move it twice along the radiator onto the cabinet <clears throat> and from the cabinet either to my desk or to when I sit on the settee um, yeah it's it's been hard been really really hard I'm I'm fortunate I've had somebody doing my dinners for me at night 
which has been an absolute godsend and they're doing my shopping for me as well <clears throat> the hardest part is living by yourself when that help is not there life can get very difficult very quickly um when i first you know initially broke it and i went to the hospital um <clears throat> i bought my dad's crutches and to be fair i was nipping about on them you know quite happily what i have found though is as the time's gone on and the pain gets worse before it gets better moving around on the crutches gets harder and as we all know pain's tiring um it can literally drain the life out of you so one of the big problems i've had along with the break to my ankle is i've actually twisted my knee and done something to the tendons or the ligaments or whatever um the knee pain is excruciating even though there's no break the knee pain hurts more than the broken ankle pain so even just moving around on the crutches it makes it <clears throat> quite painful because like i say there's that pendulum effect and it's there's no smooth transition from the crutches onto the good foot so you kind of get that jolting hard impact which then transmits the pain down my left leg which is my bad leg through my knee and then into my ankle the only thing that i found that kind of like appeases the situation is <clears throat> if i have my leg so that my knees bent and my left leg is sticking out in front of my body you know so it's like in front of my right leg so if that's my left leg and my right leg's that one then i have it kind of like that just so that there's that little bit of bend and shock absorber in there just to take a bit of the hardness out of it but yeah um <clears throat> the pain now is considerably less than it was i mean don't get me wrong it still hurts i still take me tablets and that um <clears throat> but i have cut down now on the codeine based tablets and i'm relying more on paracetamol and ibuprofen just for the pain management and swelling i've been keeping my leg <clears throat> really elevated on the settee and when all the fluid drains out of the calf and the foot you can literally get that much of your hand quite easily down the side of the casting but if you have your leg down for literally two to three minutes you start getting that muffin top effect over the top as all the fluid stops draining back into the leg and because you can't walk to move your muscles you can't pump that fluid back out so that is something that you do have to be really conscious of so where does that leave me at the moment with the channel um not too bad if i'm perfectly honest um just want to say thank you to all the people that have subscribed so far it's really humbling or endearing is that the right word um that you know you people do enjoy the videos and think that there's something interesting in the content which is really good if we can try and push towards a thousand subscribers you know by the summer that would be amazing so yeah we're trying to push for that if we can um i think with the algorithms on youtube <clears throat> i think trying to put a video out once a week would hopefully potentially encourage fat for viewing figures and as far as content goes we're going to be carrying on with a trailer build probably for the next six weeks in terms of what's going to be uploaded to youtube so coming up we have got making the trailer size we've got making the new trailer hinges um doing their trailer axle because that needed to be taken off and all cleaned up and put back on because corrosion had got in between the axle and the chassis rails and corrosion expands which have blown the welds apart <clears throat> so we've taken that off um we've cleaned all the hubs up the back plates up it's got the wheels off my other trailer on it at the moment and um, they've been painted maize yellow 
um, which looks quite good. The hubs, hub caps have been <coughs> powder coated. The wheel hubs have been powder coated. The back plates have been powder coated. <coughs> and we will be putting the brakes back in at some point, but we need to sort out a better brake linkage system. And yeah, the trailer is pretty much finished now um we've got to put some new bushes in the back of it for it to tip on um you know like where the pins go for it to tip and pivot <clears throat> so it's got a new hydraulic cylinder on the front so we're going to get some bushes i found some online that i think are going to probably do the job off a komatsu digger is it komatsu or kubota kubota i think it was um, a little Kubota digger i think they're going to do the job because they're 25 mil pins in diameter so um, we'll get some of them and the bushes ordered. We'll get the back of the bed cut up and we'll get the new bushes in and then we should be pretty much complete then, um, apart from the brakes. But I'm not sure what we're going to do about that at the moment because um, the brakes that are on it are only for parking brake. I would like to have brakes on it that are powered by the tractor so hydraulic trailer braking <coughs> is what I want so I'm looking at whether I can make something to have a hydraulic cylinder to power the brakes with the original method or whether I need to look at <coughs> potentially getting another axle which have got hydraulic brakes on it um, unfortunately <clears throat> I I got all the bits powder coated and bought the new wheel bearings for the axle before looking at the price of new axles and <clears throat> it's cost me just over half the cost of a new axle to have this axle like reconditioned minus doing any work on the brakes yet so in hindsight and i'm not ruling this out yet but i still might be changing the axle again for a brand new axle which will be <clears throat> and this is the only thing i'm not keen on it's going to be a six stud axle but i do have a set of six stud rims and new goodyear tires um ready to go on that because originally i was hoping to potentially use some other rims that I've got that are five stud and just swap the tyres over and then sell the six stud rims. But the wheels I got, I've got a different PCD on them and yeah, if I'm going to go to all the hassle of like doing all that, I'd be better spending the money on a new axle, selling the axle I've got or using it as like a secondary axle, it's not great, and putting a six stud rims on this trailer to make it look better. Um, <clears throat> not not to look better, but to make it, you know, safer, more practical, um, stuff like that, really. So yeah, that's where we're up to. And I hate, I I don't know why I just I say so so much. Um, when I look back and do my video, you know, do the editing, it proper irritates me. So I keep trying to like snip it the so out. So I need to stop doing that if I can. <clears throat> Coming up here, uh, got like. Another six weeks worth of videos quite happily. Um, I should pretty much be, you know, up and mobile again by the time then videos have elapsed. And then what I'm looking to do towards the end of the build is to <clears throat> kind of take snippets from each of the build videos and then condense something down to like a 20 minute start to finish just you know with music playing over the top with no talking whether that'll appeal better to other people um you know to build a channel i don't know but if you can you know leave a comment on whether that's something that you think would be better to do less talking in the video and more like short sharp bursts of work and then have a shorter video with music over the top if that's what appeals to you please let us know in the comments and then we can start editing the videos towards that kind of direction and oh yeah what i haven't said i haven't said how it happened have i so um <clears throat> yeah what happened was on the 17th of february i was 
Well, I'll tell you what happened for the start. The water pump on the car basically shit itself um, on the Monday, which would be... Let's just have a look at my calendar now. It's a February, so... <clears throat> yeah, on the 12th and stroke 13th, the Sunday and the Monday, the water pump on the car shit itself. So I went to work on the Monday and... To do 25 mile the car used two litres of water so yeah it's a big leak on the car so um got the car home monday night and worked from home the rest of the week which was up to the 17th which was perfect you know thank you very much to the company let me do that much appreciated um <clears throat> so on the 17th which was the friday i decided and if you've gone back and looked at the original videos I kind of started the channel with, you'll see the little Honda ST50. Which is like my emergency transport I keep at my house. So um, what I did was finish work for the day and then I went to where I was going to be doing the car on the weekend to change the water pump and the cam belt, which is where the trailer's kept. Um, because I've been doing bits and bobs on the trailer, the trailer was on the hard standing <clears throat> and I was just in the process of putting the wheels back on it at the time. The weekend of, you know, the 11th and 12th. So I thought, instead of trying to do everything Saturday or, you know, moving the trailer on a Saturday, doing the car on a Sunday, if it rained on the Sunday, I've screwed because I have to work outside but it's hard standing so it's not too bad I thought I'll go on the Friday evening I'll do what I need to do to the trailer um, put the brake back plates back on because with just the hubs and the drums it looked awful it just looked like a complete bodge so I took the hubs off again because I'd only put them on with grease and oil on the bearings without greasing the, all the inside of the hub because I knew I'd have to take them off um, <clears throat> and Put the back plates back on, put the hubs on, put the drums on, put the wheels on. You know, singing, Kenny Rogers, the gambler, happy as a pig in, you know, that uh, smelly stuff. Absolutely loving life. Everything was going really, really well. Um, wheels, freshly painted, looked great on the freshly painted hubs, the trailer chassis, been wide wheeled down, freshly painted, just on the chassis on the outside of it, just to tidy it up visually from the outside. Trailer looked like mega, like loving it. It's like, it's getting dark, don't fight the dark. No point in fighting the dark, it just takes two, three times, four times longer to do stuff. It's not worth it. Um, went in, had a cup of coffee, set off on the bike, literally not even two minutes into the journey, went round left-hand corner in the dark, front wheel hit a pothole, front wheel tucked, got spat off basically. Well, it's not, it, it wasn't even spat off, the front wheel tucked, I fell down on the near side <clears throat> and if you know what an ST50 is, like I say, if not, go back look at previous videos, see what the ST50 is. It's, I always say it's the um, it's like on The Simpsons, Crusty the Clown on his little circus bike. Essentially, that's what I look like on it. I'll put a picture up in a minute. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, uh, just literally 20, 25 mile an hour go around this corner. Front wheel hit the pothole. <clears throat> Front wheel tucked on the deck. Broke in my tibia and fibia in the ankle and made a mess of my knee basically. Uh, and that was that really. I um, slid probably 20 foot because I was only going slow. Um, let's be fair, the ST50 can't go fast, can it anyway? Um, you know, in really, really favourable conditions, you might get 38 out of it, but not for long because it'll probably blow up. Um, so yeah, just. Don't ride it in the dark normally, just use it in the daylight because it is just emergency transport, a bit of fun, you can kind of plan your day around it. But <clears throat> yeah, it was dark when I finished, so um, yeah, I went home in the dark, halfway around the corner, pothole, splat. Um, 
and that's it really yeah first week of recovery yeah demoralizing really really demoralizing um what did i do first week complain a lot of pain wish somebody would amputate me foot <laughs> and my knee because my knee was giving me the most pain um So yeah, one of one of the difficult things that I have come across is stairs. Stairs are not too bad if they're quite, you know, of a shallow incline, but mine are literally like that. They are so steep it's unbelievable. Um the treads are probably what the minimum spec tread is in terms of the width that you can put your foot on. <clears throat> Do you know how much it comes out from the riser? Uh so if you try and go up like on your hands and your bum, then the width for the tread is not big enough to get your bum on properly. So you're kind of like just right on the, you know, on the edge of it. So that doesn't work very well. Um, because I'm quite physically fit and active and people go, oh, you're lucky you're so fit and active. and that's, I'm not lucky. I'm not lucky. That's a load of BS. I'm not lucky. I put the effort in. I go to the gym. I do what I need to do to, you know, keep some sort of wobbly shape. Um, but to keep some sort of strength and fitness. Um, yeah, a bit podgy at the minute, but <clears throat> hey ho, we'll work on that. I put the effort in. I really do. Um, so I'm not lucky that I'm fit enough to do it. We all have choices unless there's a medical reason why you can't and it's your choice. <clears throat> that really pees me off when people say you're lucky. It's like, no, I'm not. I put the effort in. I put the effort in before I had the accident to be fit and healthy. And now it's coming back and it's helping me. When my ankle's better, I'll be back at the gym. I'll be putting the effort in again to get back fit and healthy. It's not I'm lucky. It's my choice. And I can't stand people that say, you're lucky because of that. But that's another thing. Um, I'm kind of digressing there, aren't we? But yeah, it's a... Uh, yeah, stairs are challenging. Cooking. Oh my God. They said to me at the hospital, do you want a perching chair for the kitchen? I was like, no, 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 no. I'd be fine. I'll lean on the counter. Blah, blah, blah. And... Was it... Um, the third day of being at home, they came out with a person chair. And I was like, oh my God, get it in my kitchen so fast. Because literally just standing on one leg in the kitchen, your glute gets so much pain in it because it is doing all the work of balancing your body. Your ankle hurts because it's balancing and you can't like, Normally when you balance, you say if you're standing on your right leg, you can move your left leg out to the side, back to the forwards, wave your arms about, etc. <clears throat> when your leg's in plaster, it's not quite that simple. Um, <clears throat> so your right leg, <coughs> in my instance, the right leg is working twice, three times as hard as it normally would be. So I find that it gets really tired really quick because of that. Um, and the worst thing I found is the pain in the glute just because it's working that hard to stabilise the body and the core so that's a thing uh, <clears throat> will it stop me riding? no, not at all um, will it make me think about things a little bit differently? yes it will definitely make me on your ride it in daylight um, I'll be honest Riding in night time isn't a problem. It was the circumstances surrounding the event that was, you know, the accumulation of it being dark. It's an ST50 and <clears throat> there was a pothole. Um, so if anyone's ever ridden an ST50, they will know exactly what I'm talking about and the challenges that you know, 
riding one of them potentially gives and because I'm quite a big person like six foot tall I am <clears throat> big on the bike um, so it's yeah combination of events um, unfortunately due to where I live there are six steps that go down into the garden from the path and five that go up into the house I don't have any outside storage at all um, and there is no safe way to get a bike a bike that is any bigger and any heavier off the road into the garden for safe storage overnight which is the reason why I didn't purchase the bike that I wanted originally which was a Kawasaki KX50 which was going to be in the um, combat green kind of um, drab green colour you know like natal green That was what I wanted originally. I thought that'd be mint for me. Perfect for business about one. Nice size, comfortable bike to ride. But the practicality of getting in and out the garden just ruled it out. The ST50 is light enough where I can get it up and down the steps on the ramp safely. And if it goes to fall one way or the other, it's not overweight where I can't safely handle it and bring it back. Whereas a bike that weighs 160 kilos, as opposed to a bike that weighs about 50 kilos, if 160 kilos starts to topple on me, if it goes away from me, then yeah, it's game over. Um, on a steep set of stairs, that's not what you want to do. And the ST50 can, as you've seen on the other videos when I was repairing it, <clears throat> it lives in the kitchen because that's the only safe place I've got for it where I live. <clears throat> if I had you know, a garden that was flat with a drive, and would I have the SC50 on the road? Probably not. Would I have rebuilt it? No. Would I have bought a new bike? Yes. Would it have been a Z650? Probably yes. <clears throat> or it would have been like an Enduro bike, so <clears throat> yeah, it'd have been more, you know, in proportion to my frame and my build and my needs. But <clears throat> yeah, going back to the crash, um, slid literally from like going around you got your lane haven't you and then you got the opposite lane for oncoming traffic so halfway around that left hand corner potholes in the middle of the lane i slid literally onto the white line that's how far i drifted across the lane um and then it's like diagonally forwards as well so like i say 20 25 foot i slid uh it was a corner that a lot of people tend to cut if they're coming in the opposite direction so yes it was a good job nobody was coming the other way um there was a car behind me uh, which did stop and then when i got up and picked the bike up they drove off um which left me then standing in the middle of the road holding my bike with a broken ankle so i pushed the bike to the side <clears throat> I sat down on the side of the road, saw how swollen my left ankle was, felt really, really lightheaded, like I was going to pass out. Um, <clears throat> yeah, goggles off, helmet off, took my coat off, took stock of the situation, um, filmed my brother then because he would then be able to get the bike back to somewhere safe for me rather than just leaving it on the side of the road because the size of it would get nicked like that um, and I didn't have the bike lock with me because <clears throat> I was going from my house which is safe to where I do all my work which was safe for the bike to be anyway <clears throat> so I filmed my brother uh, sat on the side of this was about quarter past seven twenty past seven on the Friday evening this happened um, really grateful he came to get me um, He's like, oh, what do you want me to do? I was like, oh, just take my bag back to where I've just come from. Um, and I'll ride the bike back. <clears throat> went to stand up. And I got up on my right leg. Went to walk on my left. <laughs> Straight over. Sack of spuds. It's like, ooh, uh, you might have to start the bike for me too. So, um, yeah, put my coat back on. Helmet back on. Goggles on. That's a lie, that's a lie. I didn't put my goggles back on, I gave them to my brother because um, <clears throat> as I would hit the 
road. The left side of my helmet hit the road and it broke the side of my goggles. <coughs> um, so yeah, I gave them to my brother as well. Um, so yeah, he started a bike. I got on it then, got it in gear. Because it's semi-automatic, you see, you can put it in gear while it's not moving. Uh, rode it back to where I've been doing the work and then we had a cup of coffee there and he kindly took me to the hospital. So I got to the hospital 20 past 8ish I think it was, went to gland fluid. Um, eventually got seen by a doctor at just after 2 o'clock in the morning. I had three casts put on in the space of an hour. Now these are like the three quarter casts which are like a back slab cast. Um, and then they just have the bandage on the front so that there's room for the swelling and, you know, um, yeah, just room for the swelling, basically. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, I was free then put on within the space of an hour till they could get the ankle back in the right position. And then about two o'clock that afternoon, I, which this is a Saturday now, uh, two o'clock that afternoon, I came home and, yeah. So when the fun really did begin, um, the doctor said to me, like, oh, and he did, to be fair, he did all the paperwork for me to stay in hospital because he said, how are you going to, you know, how are you going to actually cope by yourself and X, Y and Z? And I was like, to be honest, I completely agreed with him. So I was like, yeah, I'll just stay in because it'd be the best thing for me. And then I'd be seen by the fracture clinic, etc. Uh, a lot sooner. <clears throat> But the the doctors had a change of shift and then the next doctor came in and basically said, there's no point in you staying in hospital for three, four days, you might as well just go home and stay at home. <clears throat> so, yep, got sent home and that's it really. I'll put some pictures up now of how my leg looked at the time and I'll put various dates in. Um, I've taken, you know pictures every three or four days etc just to see how it's changing and developing and progressing <clears throat> but yeah it is eye-opening it really is eye-opening and it's not something i really want to repeat again i'm just really really glad that you know i put my boots on and you know, had two coats on, um, my helmet, my goggles, proper road gloves instead of my motocross gloves because the knuckle part of the left glove, um, all the material on the gloves gone and all the knuckle protectors all <coughs> pretty, pretty scuffed and had some battering. Um, <coughs> there is a hole in the end of the glove for the, that finger on the left hand and that finger had a big blood blister on it um, so that had got pinched somewhere between I'm guessing the handlebar and the road because when I went down with the bike I kept hold of the handlebars uh, I don't know it's just it's habit that is from racing over the years I guess normally when you crash the first thing you do is like <laughs> keep holding the handlebars and pull the clutch in so you don't have to start the bike again when you get back up because then four strokes do not want to start when they're hot. They really don't. Uh, yeah, it's just habit to keep all the handlebars, I guess. But yeah, if it was a bigger bike, would I have done as much damage to myself? I don't know. Put your answer in the comments if you got this far. Let us know what you think. If it was a bigger bike. <coughs> Yes, if it was a newer bike, if it was a big bike, it would have bigger wheels, which would go through the pothole better. It would have bigger, better suspension, more travel, um, <clears throat> which would cope with it better, maintain better road grip, etc. You'd have probably have better profile tyres than what the SC50 has got in regards to like the radius on the corner. Um, <clears throat> so you don't have like that flatness of it, and then that sudden sharp edge, you'd have a better roll to the edge maybe. <clears throat> Central gravity on a bigger bike, balance probably would have been better. I don't know. It's like, <clears throat> has it upset me? It's frustrated me. I'm now eight weeks behind, but the thing that's really strange is <clears throat> I feel happier now that I put myself in pain and misery. 
but I feel happier now. Um, I mean, I know my trailer's done, but I've also got this six to eight week break from life because I can't have my foot elevated all the time to work. So I'm not working. I get up when I want in the morning. I mean, I wake up at the normal time still, but do you lay in bed and be comfy or do you get up and come downstairs and be less comfy? I choose the first option personally until, you know, uh, until I need to get up early. But it's... <clears throat> There's only so much editing I can do, there's only so much social media I can scroll through, there's only so many videos on YouTube I can watch. There's only so much on radio that you can listen to before it gets the same every day. So, it's just finding little bits, pacing yourself through the day. And then, yeah, hopefully six weeks time I'll be back to it again. I have some fresh content for the videos because the trailer will be finished. Um, got the water pump and the cam built to do on the car, which was kind of like the catalyst that started all this sequence of events off. Because in hindsight, I could say if the car wasn't broken, I would have been going to move the trailer. If the car wasn't broken, I would have been in the car anyway. Um, you know, you can look back and you can look at all these things and you can go all these what ifs and that. But I've said all the years I was racing that it's only a matter of time before I break an arm and a leg. I've broken, you know, quite a few other bones, but it's not if, it's if you're on a bike, it's going to be when. Um, <clears throat> but it's part of it, you know it's going to happen, don't you? You just have to make that judgement and try and put the odds in your favour, I guess. And... Yeah, just dark, didn't see the pothole, hit it, circumstances, broken ankle. Played quite a lot on the switch with a little hands, he's four, um, <clears throat> which has been like my saving grace because it's given me something to do rather than sit at home and struggle and do nothing and while I'm there I get weighted on hands and foot so the coffee just keeps coming it's brilliant uh yeah week two was it three days ago started feeling a bit more like editing videos a little bit um able to get my foot up on the desk like you've seen and you know it's painful need to move about a bit but I'm pleased because there was footage that, because it's going back three years now, two and a half years, say, on a good day, um, <clears throat> because footage is going back over that length of time, and then when I originally started out, I was running out of storage space, so I was storing stuff on USBs, and then got external hard drives, and then one of the hard drives got corrupted, so I had to get another hard drive, and then <clears throat> there is footage that I've been looking and looking and looking for and you know at the time you think I'll call that that I'll put it in that folder name that and I'll put it in that location perfect and then as time goes on you think oh that's getting a bit messy so we set up a proper like library for all the YouTube video stuff and then some of the footage is duplicated and triplicated because it's on different devices um, so I've had a bit of a clean up of that which is really really satisfying to be honest it really feels like you're making progress and my aim is to get all the footage that I got stored processed into videos and then get all that cleared off the hard drive so I've got a fresh start again of the edited videos and just videos that are more current and more recent because at the moment I'm finding that I've got that snippet there, I've got that snippet there, that bit there, I'm missing a bit in the middle and I can't put a video together with bits missing because it doesn't follow one from one to the other. Um, and that's really frustrating in some aspects. <clears throat> and it's even more frustrating when you do a video and then you find a bit of footage that was missing a few weeks later looking for something else. 
because it's just been on the SD card, moved across into another folder in case the SD card um, has an error and needs formatting. <clears throat> that is one problem I found with the GoPro is that quite regular you can be in the middle of recording stuff and it will say there's an SD card error and it needs reformatting and it's either reformat it on the GoPro and lose your footage or stop filming and save the footage that you've got. So what I try and do now is at the end of every day of filming I try and get the card out of the camera and get the footage off it transferred onto my external hard drive so that if the card fails and needs formatting for whatever reason then I'm not losing footage. And that's about it really. Um, <clears throat> crutches going to be there for me. They get stuck in things. They twist around on you. Um, the biggest thing I find is when you've got say the crutch in your left hand and then you want to do something with your right so you hold the other crutch in your left hand as well. If you're not careful you end up putting pressure on the wrong crutch that you're not holding properly which could be a recipe for disaster. Uh, what else is there I can say about crutches? Stairs. My stairs are mega mega steep. I mean they're really really steep and going up the stairs is quite difficult. Um, it is quite difficult so <clears throat> I'll show you how I have to do it. Sorry. Sorry guys, camera angle has probably just changed, just has to change the battery because it originally went flat. Um, so yeah, what was I saying? Um, yeah, the first thing we started with really, apart from a few bits and bobs on the lathe and the miller machine, was the tipping trailer. Um, when it's finished it looked really, really good and <laughs> I was thinking of getting some, um, you know these hanging baskets that people put on balconies? Getting some of them and just hanging some of them on the side of it just to make it look a bit better when it's sitting in the garden. Um, a little bit less ugly, shall we say. But, yeah, I mean, once that range of chassis is gone and stuff, it'll look a lot better anyway. But, yeah, so we started with the tipping trailer because it was something that we had loads of footage for that I wanted to get cleared up over the years. It was a project that I wanted to get finished before I did anything else. And it is, you know, as far as working at this time is now finished. It's just videos that are going to get uploaded. Um, apart from, like I said, then bushes for and pins for the tipping hinge. <clears throat> Next set of videos, I guess, will be about the Fordson Power Major. Um, I've got some interesting videos coming up for that. We've got a front linkage that's gone on it. There is power brakes that are going to go on it. And <clears throat> eventually we're going to install a injector pump off a combine on it and a turbocharger. And to do this we're going to be making custom inlet and exhaust manifolds so hopefully that'll be interesting to some of you what else are we doing this year coming up now more road runs definitely more road runs um more shows we're going to go to going to be going out on the st50 with monkey roo if you haven't seen his channel he's worth looking up got a lovely collection of bikes for anyone that likes bikes, that's Monkey Roo. Um, I'm quite lucky, he lives pretty local to me. He's about seven miles from where I am. Um, he's got a little grey Fergie too, so he might be making videos on that soon. And <clears throat> yeah, going to go out for a ride on the ST50, go for lunch probably at Mavericks, probably a trip up to the Ponda Rosa, the Horseshoe Pass, um, do a couple of shows maybe. So, going to be lots of good cool content coming, plus... We're going to try and get some footage with my brother because he's quite comical and like myself, he's very witty but when you're doing things by yourself it's hard to be witty really isn't it? It's a lot easier when there's two or three of you. So yeah we're going to try and make the channel more exciting really. Um, if there's any projects that you want to ask about uh, we might be able to accommodate some of them we've got some a-frames to make we've got a forklift attachment that we're going to be working on as well to make things a bit easier to move about um 
and there'll probably be a scrap one in there somewhere. The other thing is, guys, the UTV LED lights I put on my major are. If you haven't seen the video of me testing them, then go back and have a look at that because I think it's probably one of the best videos on YouTube about for comparing them. Lots of people <clears throat> go, this is my original lights. These are my LED lights and I put extra LED lights on compared to what was originally on the machine. Whereas I've done a light for light comparison and I've used cheap LEDs off the internet, off eBay. I've compared one UTV 50 watt LED against several of the cheap LEDs all put on together to like get around the same wattage output and see the difference which other people don't do they go this is a bang bang off the internet this is a bang bang supplied by the manufacturer and this is a whatever LED and normally the whatever LED that they're raving about is some higher wattage number than what was originally installed which is a lot of <coughs> Complete and utter. You need to be comparing wattage for wattage and see what the difference is. And hopefully that's what my video's done. And the other thing I compared it against was like the halogen lights on my car as well. So you get a true representation. And this is all the lights at the same height. So essentially the lights are set up and they're at the same height as a car headlights. So we can get a true accurate picture of the light output in that scenario rather than mounting one like 10 foot in the air and one down on the floor and going oh look at this it's x y and z so we've got a really consistent starting point so yeah go back and have a look at that because i think that is a cracking little video just to display the light output i mean don't bother about what i'm rambling on about you know the light output says it all and the camera, the GoPro does not do it justice. The GoPro does not do it justice. My phone, I took a bit of footage on, is a lot better, but it still doesn't give you the same impression as what it does with the naked eye. Um, so I'm going to be getting a few more of them. I'm going to be getting some to go on the back as well, because at the moment I put them on the front. And I'm also going to be doing a conversion on some bottle headlights as well. So we're going to be putting UTV LED work lights into Butler headlights and we're going to convert them and adapt them, however you want to technically call it. We're going to make it so that we have effectively a high and a low beam, which is going to be great. So yeah, keep your eyes tuned for that. That's going to be coming up this year as well, ready for the winter next year. And I don't know whether they're going to be going on to... The major or whether i'm going to put them on the t20 because the lights on the t20 are all halogen at the moment and the t20's got the lucas type headlight on it which looks really good i think they need <coughs> blasting and powder coating and then changing to some sort of led setup but the only problem with the lucas ones is the actual depth of the headlight bowl or dish isn't big enough to get an LED light in with all the heat sleep behind it whereas the butler ones are so I might try and get the butler ones onto the grey Fergie that's the plan that's what we're going to try and do oh and the major hopefully is going to have remote hydraulics put on it as well um, whether they're going to be live hydraulics off the engine or whether we're just going to go using the original live drive and put a valve chest on <clears throat> but what I want to do is use a valve chest and use the levers and remote cables so I can have the levers nicely positioned in the cab and then have the valve chest on the back by the filler somewhere behind the seat so stay tuned for that we'll see how we get on with that um yeah just like and subscribe you know share it on social media for me that'd be perfect that would be really appreciated and I'll see you on the next one.